Lissa Productions. In lab six, we're going to be using diodes and capacitors to build a class of circuits known as voltage multipliers. They basically take an input voltage and output a voltage that's larger than that. The one we're building is going to take an AC input voltage and output a larger DC voltage. The basis of this is a diode, so let's go back and talk about the diode a little bit. The symbol for a diode is here. It's forward biased when the voltage on this side of the symbol is larger than the voltage here. And this little line that in the, on this symbol corresponds to a silver stripe on one end of the diode that we'll be using in lab. So that little line there is the silver stripe. It's important to get those correctly oriented. When it's forward biased, the IV curve of the diode looks something like this. IV, it's, it's this exponential rise that we measured in lab one. And we very often will approximate this as a constant because we'll have the current in some region where it's, the exponential is not changing very much. We'll call it some constant diode drop. We often call that 0.65 volts. It might be 0.67 or something, but we use a number like 0.65. So we approximate it with that particular diode drop there. So let's see how we're going to use this. So we take the diode and we're going to start by putting it into a so-called clamper circuit. We have an AC input, a capacitor, and a diode here. And in this particular circuit, this is V0 cosine omega t, so there's some oscillatory voltage. The diode only lets current flow this way. It won't allow it to flow that way. So what happens is this capacitor charges up to about V0, the amplitude of this signal here. And then the output voltage here is V0 plus the input signal, V0 cosine omega t. So we get this oscillatory signal on top of a DC level V0. That's known as a clamper. We're going to just check that and make sure it works. But then we're actually not going to stop here. We're going to add a second stage to this circuit. We're going to add a second diode, put a capacitor here, hook this up and look at the output voltage here. With the second capacitor and the diode, this capacitor is going to charge up to 2V0, and we're going to get an output which is going to be a DC level of 2V0. In fact, it's not quite going to be that. We have diode drops across both of those, so we're going to get minus 2V diode drop difference. So we're going to get a DC level that looks something like this. This is a voltage doubler circuit. It takes the amplitude here and roughly outputs a DC level that's twice that voltage. We're going to keep building this. This is one stage. We're going to add two more stages like this. So we're going to get something, a multiplier, which is going to be three stages in times 2V0 minus 2VD, just by continuing this. The circuit that we actually build, this multiplier circuit, is able, gonna, able to provide a large DC voltage, but it can't deliver very much current. So we'd like to understand that a little bit. So we're going to measure the output impedance of that. And we're going to do that by measuring the IV curve of the output of this. And let's just take a look here. We normally have an IV curve. We expect I and V. We expect something that looks like this. And the small current is down here. We're going to find with this, because of the diodes and the capacitors in it, it's not linear, but it's actually some curve that looks something like that. So we may measure that part of the curve. We're interested in operating down here. So maybe we have several points along here. We want to measure the slope of this IV curve near the endpoint. And the negative 1 over that slope is going to be the, the output impedance of this multiplier near where we actually want to operate. So that's what we're going to do with this. So we're going to build this multiplier circuit and then try to map out this output impedance and see the behavior of that. So now let's go down to the lab and have a look at this. As we discussed earlier, in this lab we're going to be using diodes and capacitors to build various stages of voltage multiplier. The first one is a clamp, then a voltage doubler, and then a circuit that actually multiplies the voltage by a factor of six. That's shown here, that's set up here in front of us here. A reminder about the diodes, you maybe can't see it here. Two legs, there is a silver stripe on one side. That corresponds to the line on the circuit, fi the circuit diagram figure for a diode. So that tells you what it is there. That's, you want to make sure that's the line. The capacitor, these little blue capacitors here are not polarized. You can put them in either way. So we're going to set this up. We're going to be putting in an AC signal. I've got it set up here with a kilohertz signal. 
And with, this, with the oscilloscope, we're going to be looking at the input signal on channel 1, which is set up, and the output signal on channel 2. And the input signal is this AC signal of a kilohertz, 5 volt peak to peak. And the output of this voltage multiplier here is a DC signal with some ripple on it. One of the things that's very important in this lab is the use of AC coupling and DC coupling. When we're looking for the DC level of the output, we want to make sure channel 2 is on DC coupling. When we want to go in and look at how flat the DC signal is, or how unflat it is perhaps, then we want to use AC coupling and we'll zoom in to look at the ripple voltage on this. So now let's, let's look in closely here and see what we've got set up. So here we have the voltage multiplier circuit, the, the main circuit that we're going to be building in this lab. It involves six diodes, six capacitors, and a resistor we use to measure the output impedance. Couple of features here. It is a uh, sort of a messy circuit. It's pretty much impossible to wire it up without using wires. So you see I've got a number of wires in here. I've still tried to minimize the number and use short wires so the circuit's clear. Input comes in here. All the ground connections are at the same point. Very important, remember. The ground of the signal generator and both scope probes. The input here we can see on channel 1 is a sinusoidal wave. I've set it at 1 kilohertz with a 2.5 volt amplitude. And the output here, you can see, is a DC level. The ground is actually down here. So this is about a 12 volt or so DC level. And it looks fairly flat there. But this is on DC coupling. We noted we have to use AC coupling to see the ripple. So let's go over here on channel 2. We'll switch to AC coupling. Now it looks completely flat. We're now going to need to change the voltage scale to a smaller scale to see what that ripple looks like. And you see when I get down into the few millivolt, you can see the ripple there. So it's actually a pretty solid circuit here. Not much ripple at all the way it's set up here. So we're going to measure the DC level and the ripple as a function of various resistors that we choose here. So we'll make plots of that. So I've got one particular resistor here. There's a number of them that vary from tens of kilo ohms up to mega ohms that you'll be testing in the lab with your particular circuit here. So take your time, set it up, make sure that the, all the diodes are pointing in the right direction. If you look carefully here, you may be able to see the little silver lines pointing up, down, up, down, up, down as they go across. Capacitors jumping between them and wires jumping between the other ones. The output comes off the resistor and everything is to a, tied to a common ground down here. So go ahead and do the lab. So to summarize, in this lab we've built a circuit with capacitors and, and diodes that takes an AC input signal, in this case 5 volt peak to peak, and puts out a 15 volt DC signal, which is sort of a, a voltage multiplier here. Now the one thing we found in this lab is that the DC signal that we put out is a solid DC signal as long as we're not drawing very much current. So one of the key measurements we made was the measurement of the output impedance. And that output impedance didn't follow the standard straight line IV curve, but was sloped a bit. And we saw that in our measurements. And when we're trying to measure the output impedance, we're interested in the output impedance near the place where we're actually operating, which is at the close to the maximum voltage that we're running. So when we're measuring that on our, in our lab, we want to measure the slope near the voltage axis, near the current equal to zero for small current. So set this up. The other thing we want to remember is the AC and DC coupling for making the measurements. And we're going to use a series of resistors to measure the impedance. And we'll see that nonlinear shape, which is very important in this lab. So let's go ahead and do this now.